Okay, guys. I've calmed myself down. I've collected my thoughts. If you haven't seen my reaction to the announcement of Pokemon Legends ZA, be sure to check it out with the card on screen. I kind of freaked out a little bit, but now, as I've said, I've calmed down. I've collected my thoughts, and now I am here to talk to you guys today about this game, about the announcement, and everything that you may have missed and need to know about this game, and what we know so far, and just everything that we could get from this title. I'm extremely excited about everything that this game has to offer and the potential it has. Uh, there's a ton of really interesting details that we do know about it, even though we didn't really get much in terms of gameplay or anything like that. And that is what I'm going to be going over today because it makes the prospect of this title even more interesting. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk about here is actually one of the major ones, and it's something that wasn't specified within that reveal trailer, but was specified later on via official press releases and things like that. And essentially, that is the fact that this game is apparently going to take place entirely within Lumios City, and the ultimate goal of the game is to redevelop Lumios City, as that reveal trailer specified, into a place where both Pokemon and people can live. Now, this is a really interesting concept for a game, but it's also something that could very easily be a cause for concern for some people, because if you're taking a game like Legends that's very open and free, and then you're saying this game is going to take place entirely within just a single city, and obviously we haven't seen any gameplay yet, so we don't know how it works, that can definitely raise some eyebrows and bring up a lot of questions about how that concept is going to work. However, I'm not necessarily too concerned about it being good, because obviously we know what to expect from the Legends brands of games, and I think we can more or less expect it to live up to Legends Arceus, even though it's probably going to be a little bit different in how it conducts itself and what it does with this game versus that game. And the other thing that I think is really cool about this whole idea is that even if it does take place only within Lumio City, the fact that we know it's a Legends game means that we know that it's more or less going to be the same size-wise in terms of the world, so if we basically have a Lumio City that is as big as the entirety of Legends Arceus's world, and it's just this sprawling metropolis that we get to explore and uh, just do different things in, I think that is going to be a super fun experience. So I think there is definitely a lot of potential here, even though it's an intriguing, different sort of scenario that we're gonna find ourselves in, and I am just really excited about that. And the other thing that this kind of ties into and brings, it, it helps me bring in another point into this, is the overall setting and like time frame of this game, because obviously Legends Arceus is set in the past, but I think this game is going to be set more in the future, or in the modern day at least, if not the future. And the reason why I feel this is the case is because we see in the trailer that the trailer is constantly shifting between a more traditional look where they're drawn up like blueprints and things like that, and then it goes to a more futuristic feel where it's showing uh, Lumio City in this futuristic vibe. And I think that is sort of reflecting the overall goal of the game to take this city from where it is now to a more futuristic place. And so I think ultimately we're going to be more set in the modern day as opposed to going back to the past again like Legends Arceus. This is also sort of implied uh, with some of the things that we can see in the trailer. For example, there's a guy or like a drawing of a guy that is wearing a baseball cap, which is obviously a more modern piece of clothing that kind of indicates more modern vibes. And then we also see another guy that seems to be throwing a Pokeball as well. Um, and then, as I said, the goal of this game is to redevelop Lumio City into a place where both Pokemon and people can live. And the reason why this is interesting in the context of Legends Arceus is because that is literally the exact op opposite of what Legends Arceus was. Legends Arceus was about building a fort and keeping Pokemon out and then like studying them and 
everyone was scared of them, whereas this game is about bringing Pokemon into the city and building a city where Pokemon can live, and I don't think that that is necessarily a coincidence. I feel like there's some, some thematic importance in the fact that those two concepts are literally direct opposites of each other, um, and so I think that's another reason why this indicates more of a future-based game, because people are obviously chill with Pokemon. But that part of it could also have some more significance as well in terms of the overall themes of this game, which is going to be really interesting and is going to be worth keeping an eye on. Another really interesting thing from the trailer specifically is this mysterious looking logo. It's a logo that we see within the trailer a couple of times, and we don't obviously learn anything about it or have any indication as to what it is or what it represents, but it does seem to be significant because it's obviously within the reveal trailer and this trailer didn't show a whole lot. So if it's going to be here within this initial trailer with as few details as we we have, it's probably pretty important. And what it reminds me of is, or what I think it's probably going to be, is like the logo of some kind of organization or company that is leading the redevelopment project of Lumio City. I feel like this is probably going to be our, uh, Galaxy Expedition Team equivalent type of organization. Um, it's possible that you could be like an employee of this company or get recruited to work on like with this company to help develop the city and help work with the Pokemon to integrate them. I definitely could see that as sort of like your role as the player character within the game because that translates really well from Legends Arceus. So that's going to be my official prediction for what that is, but um, um, it's definitely going to be something that we need to watch out for because it's obviously pretty important. And speaking of pretty important, Eternal Flower Floet. We have been talking about the Eternal Flower Floet since... It's literally been over 10 years at this point that we've wanted to see this Pokemon finally get released, and it hasn't. And now that we're getting another Kalos game, I think it's all but confirmed that the Eternal Flower Floet is going to become obtainable in some way. And I talked about in previous videos how there's actually a connection to Scarlet and Violet with the Eternal Flower Floet, because the description of Eternal Flower Floet's move, Light of Ruin, was actually updated in Scarlet and Violet when previously, it had just remained the same and obviously wasn't used within the game either. So I think now knowing what we know now, that clearly indicates uh, that they were getting ready for Pokemon Legends ZA and that ultimately the Eternal Flower Floet is likely going to have a larger role within this game to the point where we'll probably be able to catch it, which is just another reason why this game is so exciting because it's going to allow us to do so many things that we've just we've wanted for so long, like we've wanted the Eternal Flower Floet for a literal decade, we'll probably get that, we're getting Megas back, like we're getting the Pokemon Z game we never got, like this game is just gonna be like a dream come true in so many ways. And the other, following that up, way that this is really interesting as it relates to Scarlet and Violet is the whole Kalos connection that Scarlet and Violet had. I literally made a video shortly after Scarlet and Violet came out about this area in the Paldea region that's on the map, but it's not included in the map that you can explore. It's basically like this barred off area that's like designated as an area, but you can't go there. And it's right where Kalos would be in relation to Paldea because Kalos and Paldea are based on France and Spain and they're right next to each other. So it's this place in the northeast of Paldea that's like barred off but it looks like a place that is intentionally like designated as its own area. And so I speculated that there was gonna be Kalos DLC or some kind of Kalos connection. And obviously there wasn't with Scarlet and Violet, but now we're getting a Kalos game. And this game is within the Gen 9 timeframe still, because obviously we haven't moved on to Gen 10 yet. So there is definitely some likelihood that this little place on the map from Scarlet and Violet could actually wrap back around and have some connection to Scarlet and Violet and the Paldea region, and therefore it's possible we could see some connection to Paldea in Pokemon Legends ZA, which is another really exciting prospect because with Kalos being from Gen 6, we've obviously gotten 
three more generations since then. We've got Gen 7, Gen 8, and Gen 9. So seeing all of this newer stuff integrated into the Kalos region and all of the like locales and characters of the Kalos region is going to be a lot of fun. And if there's going to be any kind of direct connection to the Paldea region and like, I don't know if you'll be able to go there or not, probably not, but any kind of connection like that is going to be really exciting to see, so I'm super hyped about that too, and I'm definitely going to be keeping a close eye on it. Let's next go ahead and look at the logo of Pokemon Legends ZA itself. This logo is very interesting because first off, the name is interesting. Pokemon Legends ZA, like that's the official name, which obviously sounds a bit odd, but it obviously does connect to uh, the Kalos vibes and the Kalos like everything Kalos related because not only does Z stand for Zygarde and it clearly does because you've got uh, the Zygarde uh, cells like covering the Z in the logo so that's obviously a connection there but then the A with ZA together obviously is kind of making a reference to AZ who is super important in Kalos as well and the A of Pokemon Legends ZA in the logo also resembles the ultimate weapon, so there's clearly going to be some ultimate weapon related stuff going on, and therefore some AZ related stuff going on as well, and that obviously is super exciting because that plotline is super just fascinating, I think it's one of the most fascinating and intriguing and interesting plotlines that we've ever gotten in Pokemon, and with all of the Kalos stuff that was just like left unfinished back in the day because we were supposed to get a Pokemon Z and never did, and now it can finally be answered. This is just going to be a treat, guys. This is just going to be like an amazing treat. I'm so unbelievably excited, and it's going to be especially interesting to see how this all ties together with relation to the timeline of events, because like I said, I think this game is going to be a little more modern day and futuristic, and another reason why I think it's going to be modern day and futuristic is because it kind of bookends this whole arc of games that we've got uh, since Legends Arceus, where with Legends Arceus, obviously it took place in the past, and then Scarlet and Violet took place in the present and focused on a theme of time travel between the past and future, and now we're getting this game, which looks to be like it could take, like it could take place in the future to kind of wrap these games up into to a sort of arc that just connects everything together, especially with the possibility of the Kalos and Scarlet and Violet Paldea connections that I mentioned earlier. So it seems like this could really sort of uh, kind of tie everything together from the past few games really well, which I'm really excited about. And then last but not least, I wanted to mention one more thing that I saw my main man Dark and Windy mention on Twitter, so shout out to you, but the Lumios Ghost Girl, that has been like the biggest single, the single biggest mystery in modern Pokemon at least, if not all of Pokemon, since the Lumios Ghost Girl was introduced in X and Y. And now that we're coming back to Kalos, you know they're gonna feature the Lumios Ghost Girl in some way, but could we get some more lore? Could we find out who that one is that the Lumios Ghost Girl is making reference to? Could we actually like, just like get some more information on that possibly i think i mean i definitely know that she's gonna be there in all likelihood and i think there's a chance that that could actually be like a quest or something and they could elaborate on that a little bit which is another reason as if you needed any more that this game is just gonna be unbelievably exciting and fascinating like we haven't seen any gameplay yet but just based on pure concept alone and the fact that it's confirmed is enough for me to be more hyped about a Pokemon game than I possibly have ever been before. And we just had Legends Arceus a couple years ago that I was unbelievably hyped about. So there is just like, oh guys, I'm so hyped. I'm so excited. Uh, but I've been talking about, I've been talking long enough myself, so now I want to know what you guys think. If you guys have any things to point out or any thoughts about what I just mentioned, be sure to leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear and read through your thoughts. Uh, be sure to give this video a like as well. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more content relating to this game as we move on throughout the year and a lot of other really good content too. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. I will be
be back with another new video very, very soon. And until the next one, as always, thanks again for watching this one. I really appreciate it. And I will smell you guys later.